Hi everyone, you can hear me hopefully. Um, I'm Arno Pfeffling, working uh, for the team Zencash, and uh, we are uh, a cryptocurrency project. Today I have 25 minutes for, I think, a very complex topic. I'm trying to answer this question as best as I can. And uh, just to give you a short introduction of me, I joined the Zencash team uh, last year in September was uh, doing in the beginning meetups. I gave presentations about transparency uh, on blockchain, for example, less people were in the awareness of the not given privacy when they use Bitcoin. And um, from this point, I um, now uh, work in the business development department. So since two months, uh, I'm responsible for the Central European market, and we are trying to get uh, our project more to a platform level. And uh, the platform is needed because this is what actually an ecosystem is about. Because in, in, since uh, we created Zencash in May last year, so we are almost in an anniversary, uh, we noticed that the currency where you can have payments is a good way in the blockchain industry, but of course it's not enough. So um, this is why um, given Capabilities of blockchain technology, decentralization, security, all these um, key features, we thought this is actually perfect for a digital ecosystem. And the digital ecosystem will be the second part of my presentation, where I will show what kind of solutions have we created and what are, is still missing and is in development. So um, I want to have uh, just a short feeling about the audience. So I have uh, two question. First question is, who of you uh, is a private owner of one or more cryptocurrencies? Please raise hand if you say yes. Okay, so it was almost, um, I think, on every side someone. Now, the, on the other hand, I want to ask you, who is working for a company or institution from the blockchain industry? Please raise your hand if you do. Ah, okay, this is uh, less. Because the, the interesting thing is that most people who have started as a private person to invest or to read about uh, the cryptocurrencies, they started to work in this industry. Same for me. I was also very skeptical in the beginning. Um, I was starting to read, oh, oh sorry, right? I started to read, okay, um, what is a cryptocurrency? What is the difference between Bitcoin, Litecoin, and all the others? And uh, what is actually important for uh, the project where I now um, working is you have to make it work. Then, if you reach this um, stable state that you have a uh, supply of the coins, um, that you have uh, the mining, like we need a specific consensus algorithm, you have to pick maybe the best ones which are out there. You don't have to uh, invent the real new. So you just um, take one, put it together in a box. You have to find, uh, of course, the front end for the users. And then you reach the first characteristic, the coin supply. Next one is uh, you have to, after you have done the basics, you have to have find some exchanges. For us, it was Bitrex, the main exchange. You have to think about, okay, my users, they see some value, so I need to also present what is the mission, where we are going to, so you have to have kind of marketing. And uh, business corporations for us as a project and for cryptocurrencies are also important. Most of them right now say we are open source, we are community driven. But, you know, since my role now in the business development department, I noticed that if you have uh, IP, like if you have uh, some very specific code, you cannot make it public. Even so, it's a kind of trade-off between transparency and the functionalities which your project offers. But you have to find uh, partners who are doing internal reviews or who are able to uh, judge the quality of your code. And you see this not only uh, for in our project, this, for example, Code Particle, which is a professional company who's doing code review. Um, you see it also in Ethereum. In the Ethereum space, you have a lot of companies who are doing smart contract reviewing, and uh, they are just kind of a service. So this we noticed also. For the, uh, for the second point, the coin integration, we need some external partners. This is good. So and then uh, we have two more basic fundamental characteristics for a cryptocurrency, which is uh, for us in Zencash the usability, meaning our users are humans, so we have to give them answers, we have to help them with instructions, we have to give them guidelines, how to, for example, install the wallet, and uh, 
yeah, this is uh, what a basic cryptocurrency should do. Then you ask your users, or you, you you're open to them and say, okay, you have an asset, you can exchange uh, the coin, you can pay with something, but what else can we do with our technology? Because those characteristics, the coin supply was, I want to find uh, specific features which are unique and make my product or my project better than the others, like a differentiator. And uh, for us in Zencash, we uh, took from Zcash the CK Snark protocol, which allows us to give uh, a kind of a messaging service. Um, we have domain fronting possibilities because of the infrastructure network, where we took from Zcash also the TLS encryption between the nodes. And uh, with this, applications which are on chain or which are built on top of your blockchain, you can say, I have a good usability. I'm trying to increase the value of uh, the project. And then the last point is transparency. So uh, this is what most, which goes like in the marketing direction. Everyone who's following a cryptocurrency is saying, okay, uh, I want to have good news. I want to see updates. The blog posts are important. You know, you want to have also these media impacts. Um, there are bad examples like Verge. There are good examples. Good examples like uh, our. I, this is funny. This uh, is like uh, birds from outside. Uh, we have, for example, corporations with the Blue Frontier Group, which is an R&D company who's uh, doing some islands of water, and you can have this um, as used uh, like as communication channel. So. But with these four key ca characteristics, uh, we noticed actually this is this is okay. This is a very basic solid cryptocurrency, but this is not a digital ecosystem because it we have a payment system. Yeah, this is like we have a, a payment system. We have some messaging. We have borderless internet. So, for example, in China, uh, we have a big community in China. They noticed hmm, if the internet providers shut down specific pages like YouTube or Facebook. Uh, we can get kind of a VPN service, which is by, called Send Hide, and get them even access. But then there is there is more. You have uh, you have this big asset of secure nodes, so you can offer actually kind of a computing power to some businesses if they need to uh, hash and program some uh, compute some mathematical calculations. And of course, uh, you have education and. Actually, we, we, we looked at all these single points and noticed that the main mission is we have to decentralize. So if we talk about the digital ecosystem, it needs to be 100% decentralized. And uh, ecosystem means actually I have a platform. I offer the customer everything uh, which he needs to uh, stay on one, let's say, project or to have one project with, as collaboration with all the other projects in the crypto uh, and um, as I mentioned, first thing is in an ecosystem, I have to think who is in the ecosystem. And yes, we have blockchain and technology, but most important are the users. So this is what uh, Zencash rocked up in, a, in the last months. We have a 24 hour, seven day available customer service. So when you use one of the wallets, or if you use uh, Zen on some exchange, you can, uh, you can reach us and Report the problem. There will be one human, uh, which will explain you uh, how to solve it, or who's asking you in a dialogue to continue on your error or problem. So the first interface in this ecosystem is I have human-to-human -human interactions. It means so if I'm using a blockchain disruptive technology, I have to think about who are my users. And um, the second thing is now if we look in the structure of the digital ecosystem. I have uh, many subsystems. I have on one hand, as I mentioned in the in the characteristics of the cryptocurrencies, I have proof of work. Maybe it can also some different consensus, proof of stake, or I some other models, but I have this mining. I then on the other hand I have for example business partners who are really interested in the code. They they need quality hundred percent in code. They they cannot pay for errors. So I have this as a subsystem, then I have Developers who are actually like bringing me the solutions, so I have to pay the developers. So developers, I have to give them kind of an incentive to bring me their intellectual property, because uh, they might not interested in money. If you look at Vitalik, I don't think he's in 
invested in money. So you have to find different incentives to bring this uh, persons in this in this whole ecosystem. And uh, also exchanges, they have some different thinking about okay, I cannot integrate your coin, or if I take you on the exchange, I have to consider some other legal constraints. Even this is in every subsystem. I have a very complex uh, situation, which is only in this subsystem. And uh, if if you look in each of the subsystems, what Ben Cash and what also some other publications in this area are saying, if you want to solve it and bring them all together, you need some kind of system, funding model, of course, which is available for all of the subsystems. And you have to bring kind of a governance, which is helping in decision making. Because uh, Bitcoin was showing with the Bitcoin improvement proposal, the last biggest one, that if the mining, if the mining subsystem has more than 50% of the saying, which is really hard to find a good decision. And uh, what you see in Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin is it's actually not really helpful for the users. It's just confusing for the humans who are using it. You have to avoid that. You have to use governments. And uh, what is behind it, I will show you. Um, the first, uh, I think I need to breathe. <coughs> so, the the first success which we saw was uh, when we have those operators. There was actually besides Dash, um, maybe some other small projects and some kind of reward. So if I have a node online and the node is um, backed up with some cryptocurrency coins of this project, I will get from every block a reward, which is a clear funding model. To, uh, tell the people you have costs with running this node, you have electricity or you use a VPS, so I will give you some benefit for your support. And uh, interesting was for us that Bitcoin took 10 years to reach the point of, let's say, over 10,000 nodes worldwide. So, of course, the distribution is like we have almost 50% in the US, 30% uh, in Europe, and so on. And for us, it's uh, Within one year, we reached the status of uh, Bitcoin. We have now also more than 10,000 secure nodes. Um, of course, the reason is we have a high reward. So we are giving like 8.5% uh, and soon maybe 10% to this node operators. And this is what uh, is shown here. So it's like we started in the, uh, we started in the test net. Then uh, some, yeah, this 21 weeks ago, we went to the main net. So every week, if you have nodes in our infrastructure network, you will get paid in a cryptocurrency. And I think the main difference is to the staking, because you can have a kind of wallet and stake your coins on the wallet if the wallet is online. Uh, for us, you just have to link the address. So you just have the node. You have on your wallet, it can be a mobile wallet or can be the ledger wallet, have your coins there, and the reward is paid to you. This old wallet wallet. This is the reason why we were very successful there, and I have uh, I, I have another slide. So this treasury thinking, like creating financial benefit to the people you support to grow, to support the infrastructure, uh, there's a, a rough estimation. So there is a specific paper of one of our big R and D corporation partners, IOHK. Um, they have uh, actually made for Ethereum Classic a lot of this treasury and government processes, but the good thing is because of an um, of a corporation contract, they choose as a prototype for their governance paper Sandcash. So Sandcash will be the first um, cryptocurrency from IOHK Group, maybe some of you know from Cardano, uh, Charles Hoskinson is the CEO, he is very close to our CEO, that's why uh, we are in the lucky position uh, to have this prototype and big experiment. Um, so some of you might know if we have a decision making on blockchain, we are very easy to use liquid democracy. So we can have, we have here the voters. The voters, they, uh, they buy tickets or they stake their coins and they get the tickets through the staking. And then they can just give this voting ticket for some decision making to an expert and the expert collects from different voters or they say, uh, like I'm in vacation, please do you vote for me, or I have no time to read in this proposal. So you have this liquid democracy. And um, then, of course, I mentioned, we don't have to invent the wheel new. So we took some, or the IOHK group, 
it's using uh, some of the Bitcoin improvement proposal. Like you have very fixed structure, you have to fill out a specific form, you have to give also some hypotheses about what will change when they do their uh, do the proposal. And this this one is everything going on kind of a template, and it's linked uh, to the blockchain. So uh, this voters they are now making the decision and uh, why is now Sendcash different than other government systems because for us we are still using CK smarts if I have some voters here uh, we, we are not we are totally intransparent in this voting process so we are not seeing how much yes or no do I have in this time point um, I don't know I, I don't see which one was giving the vote to a specific uh, yes or no so the voter is hidden Amount is hidden, like the normal things which are happening in CK Smart. And that is why we have here this committee. Uh, since we have this totally anonymous, intransparent voting process, I need a committee which is choosing from all the voters who are like uh, confirming and are kind of a trust party. So I'm generating my trust from all the voters. They are randomly picked, and each of them gets a specific, like, let's say, private key to ensure. When the vote is collected and we have to make the decision, then they have to go through every single committee member and to say, okay, yes, I see on the data, if I put my private key, I have 60% yes on this side. And then all the other committee members, they don't know from each other, they are doing it as well. And that the committee is finally making the decision for the whole voting, which, for example, can be four weeks. Uh, I think if you want to see the more detailed and more theory behind it, then just go uh, to IOHK and look for the paper of uh, how to enable governance on blockchain. Because there, there's a scientific paper about it. I can only show a rough graph of it. And uh, then there's also the difference of like how to get this treasury, the funding. 